All right, back to work tonight. It's about that time of day again here, folks. Wednesday evening, it's August the 18th, 2021. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. If you're watching for the first time tonight, it's great to have you with me. My job tonight is to help us find the best trade setups for tomorrow. That's Thursday's trading session. I got a great video in store for you guys tonight. Charts are already in the background, as you can see. S&P's ready, NASDAQ's ready. All the gold, of course, is ready for tomorrow. Glad to see you are ready as well. Got a lot of great trades on our radar. Our gold is rotating back and forth in a range right now. So we're buying low. We're selling high. Got some real nice setups on the gold. Maybe a breakout on the gold for tomorrow. And then the S&P and the NASDAQ, you know, we talked about last night, those big moves down yesterday. We were expecting another leg today, and they definitely did not disappoint. Another big leg down on the E-minis here today. There were four, I know, four different scenarios I'm, I'm kind of getting prepped for for Thursday's trading session, whether you trade in the S&P or the NASDAQ. So you're going to want to tune in and watch the entire video here tonight. We've got four different kind of uh, different game plans depending on what we see in the overnight session. So we'll cover all those details in tonight's video. By the time we're done tonight, you'll know my favorite trades for tomorrow. You'll also know some stuff to avoid to keep yourself in the green, whether you're trading on your own or you're trading with us tomorrow morning in our trade room. Now, of course, before we jump into the video tonight, as always, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm going to publish this video every evening with my best trade ideas for the following day. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure you subscribe. Hit that little bell icon so you never miss a beat on this YouTube channel. If you guys have any questions, don't forget, drop those questions. I would love to answer any questions that you might have along the way. And as always, if you guys enjoy this video as much as I enjoy making it, do me a favor, hit that like button, that thumbs up here for me on this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro, though. Time is ticking. Thursday is right around the corner. Where do we go from here? Well, like I mentioned earlier, we've got a range on the gold right now. So we are buying low. We're selling high. We're trading the rotation. Now, speaking of rotation on the gold, uh, we're going to talk about some different rotation things to watch for tomorrow because, well, you know, for example, right now we're waiting for that rotation all the way back up. And I'd love to short that that high here on gold, but if this rotation was to fail, right, we, we definitely have some good opportunities for a breakout going lower. And we heard from the Fed a few hours ago, right, we had the FOMC minutes released a few hours ago. They talked about tapering, and so that might that might lead to a breakout here for the bulls as well. So we definitely have some, some range trades and, of course, some breakout trades I'm watching here on the gold. Again, gold will, all, will be all about rotation for tomorrow. NASDAQ and the S&P are, are pretty straightforward. We got strong legs down here today. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, right? We talked about this last night. We expect to see another leg in the same direction. So we're hoping to be able to sell some some pops, right? Sell some pops off of this low. Now, that's one of the scenarios we're getting ready here for tomorrow. As I mentioned in the introduction, we've got kind of four different kind of game plans depending on what's going to happen here in the overnight session. Not to worry, we're going to cover all four of those game plans for you guys by the end of this video here tonight. Now, we've got some big news tomorrow morning, so let's make sure we're all on the same page on this. Let's grab the Econo Day calendar here real quickly here today, and let's make sure we're all on the same page because tomorrow we get some more big news coming tomorrow. we got some manufacturing. we got some jobs at 8.30 Eastern time. That will definitely be uh, the big news of the day tomorrow. I would imagine tomorrow be a little bit of a reaction day because, again, we heard from the Fed a few hours ago here at 2 o'clock Eastern time. They're talking about basically basically uh, scaling back on their equities and their bond purchases, right, which is a form of tapering, right? So they're talking about in those meeting minutes uh, basically tighten up the, you know, tightening up the belt, right, taking away the punch bowl, as they always say, right, when it comes to the Fed stimulus. That's what, pr that's what caused the... Uh, the big sell-off here this afternoon, and it's what might cause some big moves on gold here for tomorrow. So tomorrow will probably be a little bit of a reaction day, right, to the FMC minutes that we saw here this afternoon. We get some big news coming tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time, so you definitely want to be at your desk uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early. And of course, don't forget, we've got our trade room opening up every morning this week, Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. I would love to have you there trading right along with us. I'll put a membership link uh, below this video on our website, or I'll put it in the description of this YouTube video. So I'd love to see you tomorrow morning. Come out and join us 
8 o'clock Eastern Time. you got to be a member. We trade this stuff together every day in the trade room. Grab that membership link and get registered, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at the opening bell. And speaking of tomorrow, as I've, as I've been trying to kind of warn you guys uh, this week here, there will be no newsletter tomorrow night. Uh, we had, unfortunately, an unexpected death in the family that happened on Sunday. The funeral is scheduled right in the middle of tomorrow afternoon. So, uh, I, unfortunately, life happens sometimes, and i got to prioritize stuff. I, I hate to leave you guys hanging, so there'll be no newsletter tomorrow night. We will come back, though, to our hopefully normal schedule uh, next week here. Hopefully, everything gets back to back to schedule here next week for that final week of August. So, again, grab that link and get registered for tomorrow morning's trading session. There'll be no, uh, there'll be no uh, uh, newsletter uh, tomorrow evening. And, of course, we'll come back to our normal schedule uh, next week. All right, guys? Don't forget, if you guys have any questions, drop those questions in the comments section. All right, let's get back to our charts here right now. Big news at 8.30 Eastern time tomorrow. And again, expect a little bit of that reaction to the FOMC mini minutes that spooked these markets and sent these things running lower. What do we have going on here on the charts right now? S&P, NASDAQ, gold is ready. Why don't we grab the S&P first? Now, don't forget, I'm going to put some chapters at the bottom of this video if you're on YouTube right now. You can see those chapters at the bottom there. And then that way, when you come back tomorrow to use this video as a reference, you can use those chapters to kind of go right into uh, the particular market that you want to go back to here later on in the process. Nonetheless, though, what's the most important factor right now on the E-mini S&P? Well, as I mentioned in the introduction, you know, we had that big move down yesterday. We talked about this last night. We were expecting the underbelly of that range to hold as resistance. It wasn't as clean as we were hoping it was going to be, but that's pretty much what happened, right? It's pretty much what happened here. Uh, the day you can see here kind of tossed around inside of a range here, and then, of course, we get that big, right, that big one, two, three, one, two, three breakout move uh, going lower here. Uh, the range above us does act like a magnet, but, I mean, come on. This is definitely a very bear market right now. Anytime we see a strong move, and this really is a is a strong move, it's also a very big move. Uh, a couple a couple of key components of that. Anytime we see a really strong move in one direction, it's almost a guarantee the next day we go back to retest the low. Right? That's why I said yesterday, right? Whenever you see a strong move in one direction, it's almost a guarantee. No, 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 you know, nothing's ever guaranteed, especially summertime markets. You know, we see a lot of V bottom reversals in summertime markets because just because volume's a little bit lower. But typically, though, you see this much strength in one direction, right? You're, you're going to have a lot of bears up here trying to get short at resistance areas and bring this right back down uh, to retest the low. Now, I also mentioned it's not only a strong move, it's also a very large move. Anytime we see a large move, right, which sometimes isn't very strong, but sometimes it just kind of melts down slowly, right, those slow melting markets. Whenever we see a really large move, the odds are pretty good we go into a range at some point the following day. Now, this may be we may get that bounce, get that short, and then we go into a range, right? So it's not guaranteed to go sideways right out the gate tomorrow, but we do anticipate at some time tomorrow we're going to probably see a range-bound market, uh, at, at least at some point here tomorrow. Those are kind of the key components here uh, as we go. You'll notice, of course, we're sitting at major support, right, at this measured move. This measured move, of course, is that big leg down from yesterday, right? It, or I guess uh, from, from, I guess, the previous day, right? Big leg down, big leg down. We're sitting right on that measured move. We got levels below us at 70s, 64s, and then 60s down below us. We got a, lo got a lot of levels to look forward to as we go lower. This 64 level level 64 and three quarters is a pretty big level of support there so we definitely have quite a bit of support uh, to look for uh, below us and if the buyers can take control right they're going to want to go back up into that range magnet but I wouldn't hold your breath right for that reversal here tomorrow now we talked about four different scenarios in the introduction right four different game plans that we're waiting for and here's kind of the summary right one of them is going to be that pullback and that retest right that's one of them. A second one is going to be that pullback and reversal, 
right? Like I said earlier, these are summertime markets, and don't be surprised if summertime markets v bottom. Yeah, it, it does seem a little bit unrealistic, but hey, we've seen you will see some strange things in the month of August, uh, late July, late August, right? That you wouldn't see in normal times of the year. So second, right? Second scenario is a full blown v bottom uh, reversal. Probably not going to happen, but hey, want to make sure we are ready for it. Third scenario is that trading range right? What's the fourth one? The fourth one is, is we keep bleeding lower, right? Fourth one is we keep bleeding lower. Now let's go over each one of these real quickly. And uh, really for the most part, a lot of this stuff can really be applied to the NASDAQ as well. The NASDAQ has a little subtle difference to it. So we definitely will make sure we dig into that here as well. Let's talk about the pullbacks. Let's talk about pullbacks. Now when it comes to pullbacks, when every, again, we know we have that strong move. We're looking for that retest, right? Now, there are three types of pullbacks that we're looking for on this. One is going to be a shallow pullback with a trap, right? So shallow pullbacks, the problem with shallow pullbacks is they don't really give us a good risk-reward ratio, right? So when you see a shallow pullback, you want to get a trap, right? Shallow pullback, trap. The second pullback is the pullback that goes, you know, for example, I'd love to get up into this 4403 area, right? Get me up into that area, get above the moving average. When that point now, we'll try to get the buyers roped in, get them to get long, and then we can use a failure pattern into a pullback pattern off the moving average, right? We call these failure into pullback combinations, right? Failure into pullback combinations, right? That's going to be kind of the modest pullback. And then you've got, you know, the kind of the V bottom, right? Let's say it does kind of V bottom here overnight, right? Now it really pops. Now we're back in the underbelly, right, of that low from yesterday. I wouldn't be surprised at all, right, if, 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 if that happens. Again, summertime trading, you're going to see stuff you wouldn't normally see. We may see a really strong bounce, right? Not a reversal yet. We'll talk about reversals here in a second. If I see a really strong bounce, now what's the problem? It's a great place to get short, right? Look at all that. Look at all that reward for the risk. It's a great risk reward ratio. What's the problem though? The problem is momentum, right? When you see a real strong move in one direction, what happens? You're likely to see another leg in the same direction, right? Same thing applies to the buyers as to the sellers. So how do we avoid that momentum problem? We let the buyers try twice. We let them try once. We let them try twice. Now, this particular, this particular, we call these two try failures. There's a lot of different ways you can take these these entries. You know, for example, uh, the, the the simplest way to do it is think about where are the stops of those buyers, right? Where are the stops of those buyers? They're right below the low of that second try, right? Buyers try once, buyers try twice. They're right at that low. So the simplest way to do it is, is take a sell order and drop that sell order in right below that low. Right? You still get a great risk-reward ratio on it, and now you've trapped in all those buyers. Another way that I like to do it is, is to draw a trend line off those lows, bring it up around that high, and grab the short off the trend line. Right? That's another way to do it. Right? Makes sense? Right? So now you're really getting short at some resistance. And if you really get lucky, you'll get a trap above that high. That's always the one that, man, oh, man, I, 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 I love seeing those. We don't always get those, right? We don't, we don't always get the trap, right? We almost always, though, will get that failure rolling over. Now, real quickly here, once we go lower, right, off this two-try failure, the next most common setup is going to be a trap off the high. What happens a lot of times is when you rope in all those buyers up here and they fail, right, we, we, get, we, we get a collapse, right? We get like this stuff right, where the buyers fail and it bam, right, it just drops. And so when it drops really hard like that, we, we, we don't always get that nice pullback that we want there. So the next best thing is that trap, right? This will be great. And this would probably be the best possible scenario, that deep, deep pullback into the underbelly of yesterday's low. And of course, we get that failure, right, depending on what, what which one we get, right, and we get that trap entry, right, before we, again, we retest uh, those lows. Now, guys, at this point, we've talked about failures, two try failures, right? Traps and pullbacks. Now, I'm covering a lot of terminology that you might not be familiar with. If you're watching for the first time right now, my best advice to you is, is we have a great quick start class here at School of Trade. I'll put a little link up there for you in the upper right-hand corner. In that quick start class, I'm not only going to show you how to find the best levels of support and resistance, all the price action setups that we're using here, right? Traps, failures, pullbacks, and a lot more. But most importantly, 
I'm going to send you a lot of examples of how we apply those setups to the right market conditions. That's the key. Remember, you know, price action setups are great, but you got to apply them in the right methodology, the right scenarios, the right situations. I cover all those details. I provide a lot more than that also, too, inside of that quick start trading class. It's a great shortcut course if you're a new trader or if you're just new to trade with me. That'll bring you right up to speed there for us. So now we know how to sell this thing as it pulls back. How do we buy it as it pulls back? It's a relatively simple game plan. I want to get up off this low, and then I've got to see buyers hold this. The buyers have to hold that pullback and jump. Now remember, it doesn't matter how strong the pullback is. It, it doesn't. It, that, that's irrelevant. All that matters is, is can the buyers dig their heels in and fend off these sellers? If they can grab this, we call these one, two, three reversals. If I can grab that, no, or should I say if the buyers can grab that, I'm not going to buy that first pullback. Again, I'm looking to sell that thing back down to retest the low, but I will grab that high. I will grab that low, find that new channel, and then I'm going to drill down to a faster time frame. I'm going to buy that first pullback. Right now, remember, this is a 6,000 tick chart, right? This is a very slow time frame here to give us the big picture look here for tomorrow. I'm not going to trade this off a 6,000 tick chart. We're going to drill down to a faster time frame. The two most common entries off those lows are failures, traps, and pullbacks coming off of that low. And again, I cover those price action details, all the entry techniques. I cover that in a lot of detail in that quick start class. And again, we know we have, right? We know we have that range uh, up above us. All right, guys? Now, that's how we trade the reversal. How do we trade this thing as it goes lower or if, if it goes sideways here? Okay, this is be the third scenario now. Now, remember, right? We may not get this thing going right into a range here overnight. We may see it bounce, come back, and then go into a range, right? Or it may go a little bit lower and then into a range, okay? So just kind of bear with me on this. We, 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 we definitely, again, anticipate a range at some point tomorrow. We just don't exactly know when and where that range will be. But one once we have that range starting to form, once we start seeing that range, what's the game plan? There are two really great trades whenever we have a bear market into a trading range. First, most importantly, you want to find a level of resistance up above the high of the range. Right, Again, bear market, we're trying to be a seller. If it was a bull market, it'd be the opposite. It'd be a support level below the range. In this example, though, it's a bear market to a range. What you want to do is, is you want to look for two trades. One is going to be the failure off the high. This is always the best one, right? Wait for the price to pop up, get up into an area of resistance, get those buyers to come in, try to get long. We call these failure setups and we can trade into those stop losses, right? We're basically, again, trapping in those buyers and using their stop losses as gasoline, right? As fuel to run this thing back down again. Now, very, very important. The amount of the move above the range can then be projected on the bottom of that range to create a target. Okay, that's important because before we get to that target, we call these pendulum swings, right? Pendulum swing. Imagine a balance area, right? Pendulum swing up, pendulum swing back down. If we, what, what, what I want to do is I want to find a way in before I get to that pendulum swing. And one of the best ways to do it is, is to grab a, if I simplify this, grab a new channel off that low, bring it up around that high. And then again, I'm going to drill down to a faster time frame, right? I'm going to short, right? bull trap, buyer failure, pullback entry off the high of that channel. So again, it's a failure off resistance above the range. And then once we start seeing that rotation now coming down, I find my new channel, right? And I hit it, right? And I hit that, that channel test to complete that pendulum swing on the other side, okay? That's always one of my favorite kind of combination setups, right? And again, right, we talked about earlier, it's not about the entry patterns. It's about the market conditions that you're in, right? In this particular case, it's a, it's a range. So failure, right, into rotation back down again. Love that trade. Love that trade. Now, here's a tricky one. What if we go lower? What if we go lower? So most of the time when you see a market that runs like this and then keeps going lower, most of the time this is going to be some sort of spike in channel. So what's going to happen is if the market, let's say, for example, let's say the market starts to kind of, ble you know, kind of bleed lower, right? Starts to kind of grind lower here uh, in the overnight. 
Okay, we know we have a lot of bears right now. We know we have a big, strong move, and we know that really any pop will likely be sold. At this point now, what you want to do is you want to mark up the base of that channel, right? Kind of where that channel runs into that spike down. You want to mark that up. Let's make it a bit smaller there for us. Mark that up and mark up the first pullback, right? That area now, that's your sell zone, okay? That's where the magic happens, right there, okay? Now, don't chase it as it goes lower. Like I said, you want to wait for that, wait for that pop. You know, at the very minimum, get up underneath some of these highs, right? Wait for that pop. What will happen is the buyers will come in. The pop will feel like a reversal. When I was a new trader, I would say, see, we've gone too far. This is time to buy for reversal, right? I would, I would basically trade what I think, not what I see, right? I can't tell you how many times I made that mistake thinking, oh boy, here we go. Now we're going to reverse. It's just too much momentum. Momentum is too strong here. So once those buyers try to come in, right, once the, once the 10 year ago version of me comes in and buys that foolish first pullback, their stops are sitting right below those lows, right? And I can now short right into those stops. Again, trapping in those buyers right as we go. So that's going to be the game plan if we do continue to grind lower. If this market really keeps on grinding overnight, keep your eyes on this 4360 to 4344. 4344 seems like a little bit too much, but that 4360 should, that seems to be, if we keep grinding, that's 4360 is definitely going to be something you're keeping an eye on for a final target right tomorrow in our trade room all right we'll get that channel back on what do you think any questions right any questions on that stuff let me know drop those questions in the comment section let's keep going here from the s p now over the nasdaq now the nasdaq is going to be something similar right nasdaq is definitely very similar right we began the day uh, knowing that we had this big bear move down yesterday, we anticipated to see that roll back down. And of course, uh, the Fed minutes, right, gave this thing a bit of a kick in the pants, right, with some talk about tapering. So we definitely have the bears in control. This is almost identical to the S&P 500 in the sense that we have not only a very large leg, but a very strong leg down, right? Very large leg and a very strong leg. So again, the strong leg says we're going to probably see a retest of that low, right? The, the, the size of that darn leg says anticipate a potential range at some point tomorrow. Now you'll notice this is a triple measured mover on here right now. There's actually three legs down if you were to measure that big high from the weekend. One, two, and three. So that's kind of where I found that triple measured move. And you'll notice if you look left here right now, you'll notice we're sitting at some pretty significant support just underneath what really could be seen as a big trading range, right? So this area here right now is a pretty decent, it's a pretty decent uh, level of support. So we do want to respect that area. If you can keep it going lower, I got that 14668, 14644. That's our next big leg down for the bears. And if the buyers do manage to grab control of this, you got that range, of course, always acting as a magnet up overhead. All right. So what's the game plan on this one now? A little bit more of a variation than the S&P. There are a little bit more curveballs here. Maybe not curveballs, but uh, we, I think we have a great spot on that battle zone, you can see, because we've got the underbelly of that of the range yesterday, and we also have this beautiful trend line coming down. Uh, what we're going we're gonna to talk about these expanding triangles on gold here uh, in a moment, but that's a really good example of how you can take uh, whenever you have a range and again, you'll see an example of this on gold. We like to look for these triangles, right? These expanding triangles, these megaphones, right? Inverted triangles, whatever you want to call them, right? widening triangles. And you'll see right here what happened, right? The buyers failed to rotate, right? So they failed to rotate. The price collapses. That's something on my radar on gold tomorrow as well. So we'll definitely be talking about that here in a moment as we get deeper uh, into this video. So I really like that that level of resistance overhead, right? We got the, the 897, we got the trend line, get the trap area there. So definitely like those spots there uh, as we go. So just like the S&P, you know, just the S&P, uh, if I, you know, think about the four different scenarios here right now, if we see a relatively shallow pullback, right, you know, relatively shallow pullback here, I'm thinking trap, right? I'm thinking trap just because I don't want to chase it as it's going lower. So shallow pullback, right? Give me a trap, right? Trap entries. Traps are always going to be your best bet whenever you're worried about selling too low, 
right? Traps would be great. Or do I see a deeper pullback? The key is get underneath the moving average, right? And don't forget, I go over all the settings, all the indicators, all the time frames. I cover all the smaller stuff, right, in that quick start class linked up in the upper right-hand corner. Get above the moving average. Get those buyers, right, because they're probably not going to see that big trend line coming down. Get those buyers coming in to buy that pullback. Their stops are sitting right below that low. You have all of that momentum, right? Who is trying to buy this thing right now? I know, I know. It is summertime markets. It's possible, but the odds are not on their side looking for a failure into a pullback combination, right? Buyers try and fail. We're selling the stop losses, we then whip it right around, right, and and sell that first pullback off the moving average there as well. Where's my target? Target, of course, is back down to retest those lows. Third scenario would be a deeper pullback, right? So now maybe it gets above that, that trend line, right? Maybe it shoots above the trend line, maybe not. It's a very strong, strong bounce off that low. Now what do we do? We respect the, we respect the momentum of the buyers, right? We're still not going to buy this thing yet. But now at that point now, the buyers had their own strong move. And so we have to respect that momentum, right? Buyers try once, buyers try twice. And again, the easiest way to do this is, is to sell right into stops, right? Drop the order in and sell on the stops. I, as mentioned earlier, I always like to grab that trend line, right? And short out that trend line. And then again, don't forget, as it goes lower, we almost always get the little trap, right? Right before we take out those lows again, right? So it's a two try failure, right? Two try failure into a trap pattern, because again, traps are always your best bet whenever you're running out of space, right? So two try failure into a trap on that deep pullback. How do we buy this market? There are a couple different ways you can buy it. Again, this is very similar to the S&P. We can get above the moving average, get those buyers to come in, get them to hold that pullback and jump. At that point now, I can mark up that high. I can mark up that low. And again, I can drill down and I can get in on that first pullback. Now, again, this is a 4,000 tick chart on the NASDAQ, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna trade this up a 4,000 tick chart. It's way too slow. Your stop loss will be way too large there. I'll drill down to a faster time frame. And again, the, the most common kind of, kind of price action entries we see off that are failures, traps, and pullbacks, right? Pullbacks off those lows. They oftentimes go right in that order, right? So, so failure, trap, pullback, and then again, we go back up into that trading range. Again, you'll see lots of examples, right? I've got probably a hundred or so examples of that kind of combination price action setup uh, inside of the quick start video, right? So definitely grab that and learn more there. I should also mention too, if the market was the V bottom, you know, and this would also apply to the S&P. If the market was just take off to the upside, you know, right, buy the dip, this, this, these, these markets, again, summertime markets could easily be swayed back, going back into that range here. If we were to go higher, right, let's say the market was to take off here and really start to grind, right, really start to grind and go higher here. Anytime we see the market kind of just jump and start to grind like that, you want to look for traps, right? Look for traps. What I'll do is I'll draw that new channel. I'll draw it really tight and grab that first trap, right? These are what we call runaway markets uh, in our trade room, right? So imagine, right? Imagine it jumps up and starts to grind and goes higher there. Just draw that channel nice and tight. Okay. You're not going to want to go to a big wide channel because you're not going to pull back. Draw it nice and tight, grab any trap. And honestly, if it really starts to move quickly, I'll take any double bottom, off the low of the channel, right? You know, again, draw that channel really tight. What I always tell my clients is, is the is the the more frustrating the grinder is, right? When it starts to grind like that, right? The key is, is you got to get in it somehow. So draw the channel really tight. And again, ideally, I want traps, but sometimes you don't get them. Sometimes it double bottoms, right? Instead of a trap there, right? Sometimes it literally just double bottoms and you don't get that trap. Close is close enough at that point, right? If it does start to grind. And again, that same technique would also apply to the S&P 500. Right? We had a lot of that stuff in these kind of lower volume summertime markets. And then of course, right? Uh, not last but not least, right? But don't forget at some point tomorrow, we're probably gonna see a range at some point here tomorrow. If we're bearish, into a trading range, what do we do? We find levels of resistance above the range, right? We then wait for that pullback or that breakout. We wait for those poor breakout traders to get in on their pullback. We then know exactly where their stops are. We can sell into stops, watch that strong move down, and then again, grab that new channel, 
And again, I'm just simply drawing the screen right now. I have a lot of examples of these pat these pattern setups in the quick start class, right? But then you can grab that pullback. And remember, you want to get that pullback before you get to the pendulum swing, right? I, I can't tell you exactly where the pendulum swing will be yet, but the key is, is once we get above the range, we trade the rotation, right? Trade the rotation back down in the opposite side. I really love these combinations. In fact, we... Right, we saw some great stuff in our trade room with those here today. Let's keep going though. Next, as we go lower, right? If we go lower, right? If we go lower here, what's going to be? It's probably going to be a spike in channel of some sorts, right? So if we go lower, it'll either be a spike in channel, it might be a spike in wedge, right? That might happen too. You know, sometimes we get something like this, right? Where it'll just kind of wedge down, right? Wedge down, wedge down. Same, same basic idea, right? You want to think about where's that first pullback, right? Try to get, ideally get up into that first pullback area. In, in, in all reality though, sometimes these things, they keep on going like this and you got to kind of scale it down a little bit. You want to get up above those prior swings, get those buyers to come in, right? Get them to try to buy. And again, you know exactly where their pain is now and you can sell right into those stop losses. These can be tricky. These can be tricky because when it grinds down like this, eventually the seller is going to stop selling. Eventually buyers will come in and you'll see some profit taking you'll see a bounce the key is not to not to confuse that bounce with a reversal now don't get me wrong right don't get me wrong if they were to hold that bounce and go right what is that called that's a one two three reversal right so that may happen right we may see something like that where it goes it jumps up the buyers for whatever reason right they're back in control now they take it and they jump right what's that called one two three reversal now, of course, I'm not going to buy that first pullback, right? I want to sell that pullback when it fails. But if it's successful, now I can mark up that high. I can mark up that low. And again, I can drill down. And I want that first pullback. And again, when I say pullback, it's not really a pullback setup. It's usually a bear trap, a seller failure, and into a pullback. It's not usually going to be, you know, usually the moving average is well above it. So we're usually going to be under the moving average. It's, it's usually not going to be a pullback setup. And again, we'll talk more about that inside that quick start class linked up in the upper right-hand corner. All right, so we got a pretty good idea now of how to trade the reversal, how to trade if it goes sideways, and of course, how to trade those three types of pullbacks here right now. Now all we need is a little bit more time here in the overnight and we'll see what the market gives us here. Last but not least tonight on the gold, wrapping things up here on the gold. Gold is a pretty interesting chart right now. The basic idea here on gold is, is we are overall bullish into a trading range. And of course, anytime we have a trading range, we trade rotation right? That is the number one thing you want to remember when I have a range on there. Rotation, rotation, rotation. And what I mean by that is, is that you want to sell it high, buy it low, sell it high, buy it low, sell it high, buy it low. And one of the best places to look for rotation is off the high of these triangles, right? Or off the high or low of these triangles, right? Basically what you do is, is once you have that trading range, I take the size of that range, and it helps me project the resistance zones above and the buy zones below, right? Everything builds off the trading range. Once we know where the range is, then we know where our sell zones are, we know where our buy zones are, and then we start looking for these triangles, right? Simply, you know, sim 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 very, very simply put. Now, at this point, you can see there's a little bit of possible variable here on rotation, right? Let me clean this up a little bit so I don't get too confusing here on us, right? Now, We've got, the, we've got the triangle top, the triangle bottom, and see how this makes sense, right? We go up, we go down, we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down, and now we're going up. Well, obviously, if we can get up around these highs, I would like to sell back down again, right? Trading rotation. But what if this, what if this trend line holds down here, though, or, or up here, right? What if, because look, if you draw a trend line there and you draw it over here, that looks like what? It looks like a bear channel, right? Or maybe a bull flag, you know what I mean? At the, or at the, at the best case scenario. That trend line seems to, be, seems to be doing a pretty good job right now. Now, that might, that might, not, might not hold very much, but if it rolls lower here, what would that tell you? That would tell me I have a failed rotation, okay? We saw an example of this earlier, right? Was it on the S&P, I think it was, or the NASDAQ? I can't recall which one I mentioned earlier, right? But anytime we see that failed rotation, that's a huge clue.
And so that will tell us to start getting aggressive on that on the sell side, right, down at that low, right? So the, the rotation is really going to be, I think, one of the most important factors on this. So in all reality, uh, there's, there's, kind of, there's kind of, well, four different scenarios we want to look for. One would be a move up and a sell back down. One would be a move up and a continuation, right? Remember, we heard from the Fed a few hours ago. And so anytime the Fed talks, you know, there could be a good reaction day the following day on the gold, right? The Fed's talking about monetary policy. Gold is the, is, you know, the fundamental hedge of the, right, of, of the U.S. dollar, right? So we know the gold will definitely be on our radar for tomorrow for reactionary play. The second, the, kind of the third scenario would be, right, can we go lower and buy off that low? And can we go lower and sell it as it goes lower, right? And of course, the big thing is, is stay out of the middle, right? Try to stay out of the middle. There's actually a couple scenarios where you can trade the middle, and I'll try to try to talk about all those details here uh, in this video. I think the only challenge we have right now, really the only challenge we have, is this trend line coming up. You can easily see the trend line there, right? That trend line is really, really important. Now, when you draw trend lines across those lows, right, what's going to happen is, is you're going to see traders try to get in off the underbelly. Right? They're going to come in and try to get in off the underbelly. Right, So that's kind of the idea behind this Right, as we, as we go higher. So trend lines coming up. We can even see that. I want to get up around, you know, and, and, and really in all reality, as long as we take out some of these highs, you know, we don't have to go all the way to that pendulum swing. We don't have to go all the way to that triangle. But I would say at the very least, I want to take out one of these highs. Right, Take out that high up there. Take out these highs up there. We may not go all the way to the top of that triangle. You know, but let's get close. Let's get close. So what you want to think about is, is as we go higher here and you've got that trend line coming up, what's probably going to happen is, is you're going to see the pullback, the buyers will try, and then we've got two spots to short this. One is going to be off the trend line, right? We call these two-legged pullbacks. The second one is your typical failure, right? All the stops are sitting right below those lows and we can sell into those stop losses, right? So it's almost like we saw back here, right? We've got that that move up. Buyers come in, try to buy it, and we're selling the stops, right? They go up, the buyers try to buy it, and we're selling the stops using the range as the magnet, right? So as we go higher here once again, imagine now that, right? Imagine now that trend line, right? We, we, we pull up, we get underneath it, we pull back to the moving average, the buyers come in, they try to get long. All the stops now are sitting right below that low, right? I can sell into those stops. I can also, of course, sell off that trend line, right? So two-legged pullback short, right? And of course, selling right below those lows as the market collapses going lower. Now, there's oftentimes a follow-up trade for this. And the follow-up trade, which is pretty much the only time I justify trading inside the middle, is when we see that roll over. Now mark up that low, mark up that high, right? And you want to grab that first pullback off the high of that channel. Okay, now again, as I mentioned before, I'm saying pullback. It's not usually a pullback setup in our trade room, right? Again, this is a, a 1500 tick chart there in the upper left hand corner. We're going to drill down to a faster time frame. We're going to find our bull traps. We're going to find our buyer failures. We'll find our pullback combinations, right? So there's really a couple different options here, right? We can sell the trend line, we can sell the failure, right, into stops. And we can sell that first pullback right as we as we roll uh, lower. And again, where would our target be? Target is back to the other side of that range. Okay, that's, pr that's pretty straightforward, right? Now, as we go higher here, could this market break out? Right? Could it break out? It absolutely could. Now, in my trade room, I have a saying that a broken pendulum is a broken range. Right? Broken pendulum, broken range. So again, we have the size of the range. The amount we went below the range is projected above the range. Right? Simple as that. So what we have to do is we have to get above that pendulum and hold and go. Right? We have to take the pendulum swing out, hold it, and go. Now, what will usually happen is, is this trend line overhead, that trend line overhead becomes your best friend. It, it really does. So once we see that move up, take out the pendulum swing, and then again, it doesn't matter how strong the move in, uh, move, move, the move higher is. Right? What matters is, is can the buyers hold that pullback? Right? Can those buyers hold it? If they can, now we mark up that high, we mark up that low, and again, you want to try to see if you can get that pullback off the, right, the top of that, again, not channel, but right the top of that triangle. Right? Now, one more thing that might happen on this, again, because we heard from the Fed, is we may see it go and start to grind. 
right? Start to grind. You know, you know what I mean? That could easily happen here again in the wake of a Fed announcement. So like I mentioned earlier, right, if the market starts to run, but, you know, we're not getting that one to go, you know, it's going and it's grinding, right? It's grinding, grinding, separating away from the moving average. What do you do? You draw that channel really tight, right? Really tight. And, you, and ideally, you want that trap, right? Ideally, you want that trap. But again, if it really starts to grind, uh, you, you don't want to be picky, you know. Any any double bottom, right, uh, off a, off a nice tight channel there will also work. Now, where would our target be up there? There's a pretty big wide open space up there. The next thing that's even close is 18. Let's call it 18, 18, right? 18, 17.9. There's not a lot uh, to work with up there. I mean, what you could do is is you could measure the amount we went down, project that up. What does that put us at? What's that put us at? That's probably the same spot. Yeah, I mean, it's almost right there, right? So 18, 18, 18, 16, you know, you can imagine that's going to be where the buyers would love to get to. Just remember, though, right, we have to get up into these highs. We have to hold that pullback, right, and we got to show some strength, okay? Once we get that, then I can find my channel and I can buy the low of that channel. Or it's got to get up and start to grind, right, grind and grind and really just, you know, again, it'll grind, grind, grind. Again, draw that, right, tight channel, nice and tight, Find that trap ideally, right? And that's the entry that you want here. Also, too, and again, this is, you know, summertime trading. W would I be totally surprised if it jumped and grinds and then at some point tomorrow we go sideways and range up here? Of course not, right? That's That definitely could happen. What do you do then? You find a level of support below the range. You wait for that failure. Yeah, see, we talked about this, right? That failure and then trade that rotation as we go. Same basic strategy. Except this one is a bull market at this point, right? So buy it, support with a failure setup, and then grab that first pullback. And again, I have hundreds of examples of these price action setups on our favorite futures markets. They're all covered in that quick start class, okay? Or the quick start series I give you guys, okay? So that's how we're trading this stuff as it goes higher here. The hard part will be stay out of the middle, right? Now, if we go lower, right? If we go lower, if we go lower, that's where things get kind of fun. Right, couple couple scenarios you want to watch as we go lower. Uh, one of the one of the trades you definitely want to look for if we fail rotation is a two try trap. So strong move down in the pre market overnight, right? Shallow pullback, lower low, trap high. Now this would not normally be something I would do uh, if we had rotation, but because we're now failing that rotation, if we see a strong move down, a shallow pullback, right, and a, and a lower low in price, that trap is definitely going to be on my radar. Right, and then of course we can also look for that strong move down, that pull back to the moving average, and a jump off the moving average. Okay, now what's the difference? The difference is is one would be a strong move down, it barely right, barely comes back to the moving average, goes lower. Right, that's a trap, and usually this will pull back pretty quickly. Right, the the the, the one two three breakout is the is the strong move down, or it could be really anything really. The key is is a strong jump off the moving average, right? Those bears come in and they jump off the moving average. Remember, it's not going to happen all the time. A lot of times we see these big moves down, but they don't jump. They don't jump, right? That's the key. It's got to jump off the moving average. I don't care how strong the pullback is, okay? Now, once we get that one, two, three reversal, one, two, three breakout, then mark up that low, mark up that high, right? And then, of course, get aggressive and short that first pullback, and again, I say I say pullback, right? It's usually a bull trap, a buyer failure into a pullback combination. And you'll see a lot of examples of that in the quick start class. All right, now how do we, where's our target going to be here? The target for the, for the sell side here is pretty straightforward. It's down around that 1772 area, right? It's kind of the, the next, next major support level here. And then below that, we have 1760, let's say, all the way down. So plenty of space there for a nice short off those lows. Could I buy off the lows? What do you think, right? So if the market ran lower here, could I buy this thing? You definitely can, but what's my concern? Yeah, we're a, lo we're, a lo we're, a we're a lot of bears, right? There's a lot of bears in the market at that point now, and not just a lot of bears, but a lot of traders who are looking for shorts because of that failed rotation. So it's a great place to be a buyer, right? I mean, we're at, we're at support below the range. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to buy at support below the range, right? That's exactly what it is. The problem is what? Is momentum. Right, I'm always I'm always kind of asking myself, okay, how is momentum and how is location? You know, those are the two kind of questions you want to think about, right? Okay, so good location here, right? Good location, but bad momentum, right? Not very good momentum, good location, 
Momentum is the variable. So once we know we have location to play, now give the bears the benefit of the doubt. Let them try once. Let them try twice. Remember, remember this? Remember this earlier, right? Stops are right above those highs, right? A couple ways you can trade this, right? I can draw that channel off that high. We've been talking about the short side of this. This is the this is the long side of it, right? So bears try once. Bears try twice. I, I let them try twice because of all of that momentum. Right? And then, of course, stops are above those highs. I can buy into stops. And then, of course, I can find that new channel, right? And I can buy it to trade that rotation back up again, right? A two try failure. You know, maybe we get lucky, get that trap or that buy off without that channel. And then, of course, in the new channel, as we make that run going higher here, all right? Again, just be patient off of those lows. And then, every once in a while, we see a V bottom like this. You know, every once in a while, we'll get something like this where. It'll run lower, right? It'll V bottom and go higher like that, right? In those situations, you can grab those traps. It's the same basic idea. You know, it's bears try once, bears try twice. Just make sure you get a trap, though. If it V bottoms off of that low, the trap will be where the money is, right? That, that's, that's where the professionals are waiting to get in on there. They're not going to trade inside their range. So again, you know, summertime markets, if we do see it trap and, you know, or, or, or V bottom there, just wait for that trap and buy that rotation going higher. All right, guys. Now, I'm sure there's something I missed tonight. I'm sure there's some curveball out that the marks will throw at us tomorrow. It is a Thursday, right? So we got jobs and we got some manufacturing tomorrow morning. So you don't want to be late to our trade room. I will make sure we cover all the bases tomorrow morning. We'll update the charts and we'll, we'll have a good day tomorrow. I had a great day today. Looking forward to a great day with you guys tomorrow morning at the opening bell in our trade room. Speaking of trade room. Don't forget, getting registered is really, really easy. I'll put all of the membership information you guys need in the description of the YouTube video. I'll put a big button for you right below this video on our website. So grab that link, get registered. We got a bunch of great membership specials going on right now in the month of August. Don't be afraid to call the office. I would love to go over all the details with you there. Use that toll-free phone number. I got live chat on the left. I got live chat on the right. You can always drop those questions in the comments section below. Once again, a quick reminder, I will not be here on the newsletter tomorrow night. I will be, of course, with you guys tomorrow morning in the trade room. But unfortunately, no newsletter tomorrow night. I look forward to being back to my normal schedule next week with you guys as we finish up, my goodness, finish up the last week of August. Once again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a bunch from it. Hope you crush these markets tomorrow. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow morning at the opening bell. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.